I've seen many parents in Michael Clay Thompson Facebook groups who talk about and ask questions about the first three levels of the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum, like Poodle, Voyager, Island, this stuff. And I think it's just because it's a foundation. It's a foundation for that grammar, writing skills, even some reading comprehension. Many parents feel comfortable using those books to teach their students. However, with MCT level four and onward, things really ramp up. So you may be wondering, should you even buy these books? Can you use these books to teach your children? Can your child or student work independently through these books? Or do you need an online educator such as myself to really help students work through these books with a lot of quality instruction and guidance? My name is Jessica and I have an online English and math tutoring business that helps students ages 11 and up. I've been using Michael Clay Thompson for several years now and I've used the Island series up to the level six and beyond. In this video, I'm just gonna share my personal opinion as well as some experience. I'm gonna share what some of the books look like and I'm gonna give you my personal opinion as to which books I think are really worth your time and money. And if you like this type of content, you can subscribe by hitting this button below. So with level four, there's both good and bad, mostly good though. I do like this level. I really love teaching students of this age Age because they usually, especially if they've gone through MCT, they have the foundation, but yet they're not totally worn out by it. They're really eager to keep going because they've built confidence. My favorite is the one called Vocabulary of Literature. To me, these lessons feel more organized than some of the upper level books because they're laid out this way. And I think this is just enough content to digest within an hour. That's how I tutor my one-to-one -one students. We, I work with them for one hour and we're able to cover quite a bit within that hour. I like that each lesson provides vocabulary from the previous level. So if you have been in the MCT world, these words are reinforcement. But if you haven't, you or your student gets to learn new words that are slightly easier than the new ones that are presented. So take a look at each section. You still get to label sentences. You get to answer some writing questions. This stuff is great if you like consistency. The bad is that it can get repetitive because every single lesson is laid out the exact same way. Of course, if you are a homeschool family, you already know by now that you can pick and choose. You could take one week to do a whole lesson or you could say, we're gonna do two of the pages in the lesson, but then I'm gonna give you creative writing assignments instead of writing with the vocabulary words, whatever you like. Personally, I enjoy buying the instructor manual, the ebook instructor manual, because you get everything, it takes up less space, you don't have to wait for it to come to the mail you just download it immediately and you have all the answers there so if your student has a student book it's great i have taught with these books when the student didn't actually have the book i just used it to help with their enrichment because they needed vocabulary help they needed just a, a good solid textbook to help them but yet you can pick and choose and i think that's something that they don't really want to tell you with mct because you know they are business they want you to totally buy in and get all the books and work through every single one of them so be savvy with your pricing. Even if you hired a tutor, if you use one or two books, you're still spending less money than if you buy the entire set. Now, level four, literature. Oof. This stuff is, is pretty intense. Whether your student is labeled as gifted or not, these books are, I wouldn't really recommend these books if I was teaching these students in the classroom or even the one-to-one -one teaching that I do. I mean, I like Edgar Allan Poe and I think everybody should know about Sherlock Holmes and read some of these books, but um, I've read these books with students. I've had students do well with these books and I've had some who took one look or their parents took a look and said, uh, can you recommend anything else? And yes, I can, because if you can see all the books back here, I've got tons of recommendations for both upper elementary, middle, and high school students that, you know, books that were either on their level or even above their level that have quality stories and character building and he emphasizes the classic stuff and classics are great, but you know down deep really what's best for your child or student. You know that like if they do well with this curriculum and, they use, and suddenly they see a book and say, ooh, I mean, some of these stories are dark, they're violent, they have merit to them, but it depends on your student, their maturity level, their background, all of that. I will say that with every level, when it comes to these literature books, 
They are usually available for super cheap on Kindle or on Amazon if you buy a used book or they're at the library. They're very much available so I do like that. It's not like a really new obscure book that's expensive so they give you a little break there. Okay. Level five, I've talked about this level before in a previous video, which you guys are welcome to go check out. I do recommend checking out that one, even though I made it a while back. If you or your student wants to learn more words, they're there. Trust me, there's tons and tons and tons of them. All the stems, vocabulary, plenty of writing activities that are academically stimulating. Some of them are actually pretty high level if you ask me. So every now and then if I feel that a student is not enjoying those or isn't getting a lot of value out of them, I'll substitute that for other creative writing or argumentative writing prompts that I have either that I've come up with or that I find somewhere else from another teacher. Again, if I'm teaching this or if you happen to be teaching this, you can use these books and just pick and choose your favorite things or the most relevant, effective things. There are chunks of classic history here and it's, it's educational, you know? It really does shed light on how our world was really shaped by the customs and language and culture from, you know, like Western education, it, you understand so much more about where people have come from. You understand why things are the way they are today. Oh, the Romans did that, so that's why we still do that. However, the way it's worded is really quite dry. And you know, sometimes learning isn't always woo fun. You know, it can be serious. Learning means you get to sit down, get to focus, read what happened a long time ago. Whether it's completely relatable or not, this is worth learning or you have to decide if it's worth learning because you can work through and simply learn vocabulary and skip the that heavy content if you want to. I do pick and choose with that. It's so funny to see how some students really love reading about it and they just eat it up and they're into it and others are just like, eh, you know, I'm just here to learn how to write and do grammar in a better way and be better at reading comprehension and discussion. But hey, there are pictures and everybody likes pictures in a book, even adults, just admit it. I always talk about the magic lens. I really love this as the next best grammar book to get. I think the best grammar you can do is, well, first of all, starting with Grammar Town on the island level was always, that's like the best way to get started. And then the other books just simply build on that. Some of it really is just copy pasted. Don't tell Michael Clay Thompson I told you that though. I have an 11 year old right now who is using the magic lens and she already had a lower level. Now this book is just good enough for her because it's got the same rules, right? Same grammar rules, but it just goes into better depth. It gives better examples. It's just more like rich content simply because the book's bigger. There's more going on. There, um, there are a few activities like this. Again, if you go back to that other video, you can kind of take a glimpse at this book. Level five word within the word is tied to the level six word within the word. So when level five ends, it picks back up on level six. And you can buy those books and use them for like a two year time frame if you want. There are hundreds hundreds of stems in these books um, but I will say some of them do cross over and repeat so maybe that's a good thing you know more reinforcement. The challenge is that these books are so dense that if you're trying to get through them quickly and just check a box like okay we did level four we did level five if you rush through it your student's going to learn it and then forget it and I don't think that's the point of quality learning is it like Sometimes schools feel that way. You're just rushing through things. But I think when you're learning on your own, you're working slowly and diligently with a tutor or in your family setting, the point is to just go through it and learn it and enjoy it and let it sink in. And the books are built for reinforcement. So what you learn in the first book, the second book, or even later on in the first book, it will flash up those vocabulary words again or those same grammar or or information about an author, it, it sh repeats it here and there. You're remembering it and you're also reviewing it, which causes you to, you know, remember it even more. Here's level seven in the books. And I will say really avid readers, if your level five or level six student is somehow rushing through the literature books, I advise them to go on to the next level. I say, okay, you, if you've read this book here, then go ahead and we can talk about the next novel here and, uh, 
quick tip, it's great to just pick the books that if you're instructing them, pick the ones that you've already read so you can really have a worthy discussion with your student. If I haven't read a book, I try to hurry up and read, well, not necessarily hurry up, but I'll look ahead and say, okay, well, I see that level seven says to read these three books here, one of them being the narrative of Frederick Douglass. Maybe I've only read bits and pieces of that years ago, or maybe when I taught in the classroom, I taught portions of that, but I can go ahead and read it and then a month later, I can suggest to the student, hey, I think you're ready now to read that book because you finished all the level five and six books. Each level of MCT has a poetry book, but come closer. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You really only need building poems. And I know you're thinking, wait a minute, this video is about level four and up. Why are you mentioning a book from level two? Because to me, that book is sufficient enough because take a look. This has everything, more than you've ever learned about poetry. All of the terms here, the styles, there are examples here, and there's a glossary, all of that. The other poetry books just seem to repeat that, and I mean, that's okay, I understand it. You want to feel like you're getting a new book with every level, but if you really want to learn poetry, honestly, anytime I teach poetry with students, I go back to that one book. And I just say, this book offers all the foundations and we tend to not spend as much time on poetry, I think, in the real world. So therefore, you really only need this book full of poetic foundations here so you can go back, look at the different styles, learn how to rhyme properly, use your new vocabulary words to rhyme, create poems, go back to iambic pentameter. I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't learn about iambic pentameter until high school. And this book here is already talking about it. See, so I think there's nothing wrong with buying a level two book for your middle or high school student if it is good enough. And I think building poems is good enough. Okay, the advanced academic writing books, if you want to hear more about that, I can make a separate video about it. So let me know because the more videos like this get seen and shared by you guys, it just lets me know that you guys are curious and you want to learn more. The more it encourages me to make videos about it. So comment below if you want to hear. I have some opinions on it, especially as a tutor like me who in my business, I coach students with writing quite a bit because they need it. I love writing. Students don't get to do enough of it in schools. With homeschooling, you kind of have more time to do it and that's the beauty of homeschooling, isn't it? I will say that all kids are different. In my opinion, I would want somebody else, at this point, if you don't feel confident enough or if you don't have enough time to use these upper level books like this to really appropriately and successfully guide your student through them and hold them accountable, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what that's where I come in and I get to help because I really love doing that and I'm here to take the pressure off of parents because um, there's a lot of programs out there but mine is always very personalized. That's part of the joy of getting to do this is getting to know students and actually work with them at their level to increase what they know and really speak with them one-to-one -one about Look at these vocabulary words. Which one do you already know? What type of struggles do you think you're having? How can I best help you right now? Where do you want to be a month from now, skill-wise? Even students who are self-motivated and who are solid students, they still miss things. I've had students that I, sometimes I assume they know something and then I realize, oh wow, they didn't know that. I'm so glad I discussed that bit of content or that story or that vocabulary or that concept with them. I'm glad that we talked about it because if I just assumed like, well, they're already smart, so they're ready to move on, they're missing out if we assume that they just are gonna get it, you know, on their own. Students can do a lot on their own, but not everything. So my business, JPES Tutoring, offers a few hours a week for students to learn English language arts with me. And I use these Michael Clay Thompson books quite frequently to coach students through their vocabulary growth, their writing ability, and definitely their reading comprehension. I wish I'd had these books as a kid because they're so thorough and they help fill in any gaps that may have been missed but in school or even by other homeschooling programs. However, I don't buy all the books like I was saying. Here are the most useful ones in my opinion. So now, if you're big on poetry, of course, you can buy more poetry books or if you want all of the advanced academic writing, certainly do that. But for me and for what I've heard from other parents and for what I see that students need now so that they're successful later in the real world, these books help give that foundation or help 
continue to build on that foundation, right? So guys, what are you waiting for? I would say grab the books that you need and if you want a quality online English instructor who has taught in a classroom and who teaches currently homeschool students and students after school, definitely reach out to me because by now, by the time you see this video, I might still have some openings. I've had students and parents say they did take the Michael Clay Thompson online course and you can. I've helped people who were enrolled in that course. I've also helped people who said they wanted an online course but they just wanted more one-to-one -one feedback because in those larger classes, you're just not getting the same type of attention or quality feedback that you would get through someone like me. You know, Michael Clay Thompson, the whole world, the whole everything that they offer, I think it is so wonderful and so thorough, but you know, they are business. They're gonna encourage you to buy all the books for every single level, and if you wanna do that and spend your money that way, you can. But I'd say working with me for a few weeks or a few months can really get your student where you want them to go. But you're savvy, I know you're gonna do what's best for you, your student, and your family. Thanks guys for watching. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.